Amen. I want to talk to you today on a subject, amen, which may sound a little bit strange, but I want to talk to you about deep tissue injuries. All right. Uh -huh. Deep tissue injuries. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some of you may be familiar with that term, especially if you're an athlete. Mm -hmm. Some of you may not be quite as familiar with that term of deep tissue injuries, mm -hmm. but you may have heard of deep tissue massages. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Some of you have heard of that. Oh, I, oh, that I know. I know what that is. Deep tissue massages. Amen. Deep tissue, the concept talks about below the surface. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Inner traumas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes when you have uh, deep tissue massages, they call it that because they're trying to get into the inner layers, the yeah. under layers mm -hmm. of what's going on. Because sometimes you have some soreness, some achingness, or things like that, and it's not just on the outside. You can have things happen to you, and, and sometimes they're obvious. You get a scratch, you get a cut, you get a wound. And it's clear and obvious from the outside. But sometimes you can be in a situation where you look perfectly fine on the outside. Why oh, are y'all hearing me yet? But on the inside, there are some things going on that aren't quite as apparent from the outside. Amen. When we talk about deep tissue injuries, all the athletes know about those things. When you strain a ligament, when you twist, uh, twist something, uh, you can have muscles that are sore because you've been pushing and working and straining them to the point where now there's aches and pains in you. And it may not be obvious from the outside, but there's some pains, there's some, some damage that's going on underneath the surface, and it needs to be addressed. A lot of times if we don't see it, we want to address it. But there's some things that need to be addressed. And some of us, it may be age-based. Amen? Some of y'all may know about that, too. I'm a witness. I know all about it. I got some, I got some, I'm getting some pains. Every time I go to the doctor now, they start talking about early forms of, 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 of arthritis. Hmm. Amen? Listen, listen. I'm all right with getting old. Amen? Because it beats, beats the alternative. Amen? Amen. Aging is a natural process. I can yes. accept the fact that I'm yes. getting older. Yes. It's not Amen. whether you age, it's how you age. Amen. 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 But there's a natural process in aging. A lot of us like to fight it and resist it and ignore it. But the truth is what the truth is. Amen. Right now I got a wrap on my knee because there's an issue with my knee. Amen. Amen. I've got problems with my big toe. It's been going on for a while. I got ankle problems every now and then. And they said in my knee, he said, yeah, yeah. They said they confirmed I tore my meniscus. Amen. But they also said there's some arthritis up in there, too. I can feel some things every now and then in my joints. I got something going on in the muscles in this hand. Every now and then I just stretch it and just pull. Amen. This is reality. Amen. It may not look like it on the outside. I might be looking fine and looking clean and straight and walking all right. But there can be things on the inside ailments that are going on underneath the surface Amen. that cannot be seen by everybody. Amen. But that doesn't mean that you're all right. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now? Just because you look all right on the outside, just because you got a smile on your face, just because you're consistent in and out, you go to work every day, you come home every day, doesn't mean that everything is all right. Are y'all hearing me today? Amen. Everything that hurts you is not obvious. Amen. Amen. And sometimes it's not even obvious to you yourself. Amen. Sometimes you can be hurt, you can be injured and not even realize how injured you are. Yeah. You think everything is fine, you think everything is okay, but the reality is there's something going on inside of you yeah. and you may not fully understand what it is. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Talking about those deep, deep tissue injuries, those deep-seated things that are happening underneath the surface. What I want you to understand today as, as we are, and this is timely with what we're talking about, because as we're in pursuit of spiritual maturity, I want you to understand that, that we must deal with things that are beneath the surface. Amen. Some of us cannot truly effectively go forward in Christ because there are things that are still going on beneath the surface that haven't been dealt with. And whether you realize it or not, they hold you back from becoming what God truly has in mind for you to become. 
And so there are times things get so deep in our life that we don't even recognize them anymore. We may have forgotten that happened to us. We may not even see the impact that it's had on us. But every now and then something shows up and you realize, oh, there was some hurt there. Amen. I thought I'd gotten rid of that. I thought I got over that. Didn't think that bothered me anymore. Amen. Thought I'd move past that situation. A lot of times we're responding in ways and don't even realize that the ways that we're responding in are a result of things that have happened in our past. Things that have embedded themselves in us that have caused us to react or to respond in a certain way. We have certain pains, amen, that we've learned to deal with until something gets close to them. And when something gets a little bit too close, anybody know what I'm saying? Amen. There comes a response out of you that you didn't even know was there. Because that thing have got, has gotten so deeply embedded in you, amen, that you barely recognize, amen, that there's even a problem anymore. Just because you've forgotten about it doesn't mean it's healed. Just because, amen, you've moved on doesn't mean, amen, that that situation is fixed or that it's gone in your life. There are times when we get certain things that respond. You get a flash. You get a, anybody know that is have a flashback? Amen. You just responded out of somewhere. Don't know where that came from. Amen. What, what, what was that? Amen. Where? Whoa. Hey, hey. Where'd that come from? You had a flashback. Amen. Somebody touched on something. Somebody hit. Amen. Pressed a button. And all of a sudden, Lord, I thought all that was gone. Lord, let me take me back to the altar once again. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Every now and then you get a certain pain that comes up and it's not only physical. Amen. It can be emotional. It can be spiritual pains. Amen. How them folks in that church did you? Amen. Amen. The time they talked about me, what I had to go through. Amen. How I used to get treated. Amen. Down on the inside. You thought it was all right. Thought it was okay. But something happens. Amen. And it shows up. Many of us have avoidance syndromes. Amen. Amen. It's like certain rooms that you don't like to go into. Amen. Anybody got a room in your house? You don't want to open that door by yourself. Amen. You got one of them old houses and it got them crickety. Amen. Attics. I don't like to go up in my own attic. And it's a new house. I don't like to go up there. Amen. Don't make me go up there. Amen. I, there's, there's issues up there. There are some places. Amen. We may be okay in the rest of the house. But when it comes to going to that room, amen, I'll send somebody else in there. I'm not ready to go into that room. Things that are buried in our spiritual nature, our spiritual house, that we've just learned to accommodate, but we haven't really gotten them resolved. I want you to understand that those things, even though you may have learned how to live with them, are hindrances to what the fullness of what God has in store for you. They impact our character. Sometimes they impact our mood. Anybody ever have some mood shifts, mood swings? Sometimes we don't even know why. We saw something, we heard something, we thought about something, and it shifted our entire attitude. Nobody did anything to us, but then the next person that comes up and says hello, you're like, hmm. And they're like, what's wrong with you? Because there are things inside of us that have not fully been resolved. If we're not careful, they actually become part of our character. They start dictating how we respond to certain things because we have protective modes and protective zones. They control how we, how we react, what we will do and what we will not do, what we'll commit to and what we won't commit to. I'll go this far and no further. Some of us have a relationship with God where I'll go this far and no further. Because of other situations that have had and other things that have been exposed in our lives. And they put certain things into our nature and character. What am I talking about? Some of us, amen, are, are only willing to trust God so far. We're only willing to give God so much of our life. We may feel like we'll, we're giving him everything, but there are some things. And God, every now and then, if you ask him, will point them out to you. There are some things that we hold on to. Lord, I trust you in this aspect of my life. I trust you with this. I trust you with that. But when it comes to my emotions, hmm, I don't know about that. I trust you in the situation as long as I can have enough control of it, amen, to make sure it's going to be all right. But if I have to step out beyond my control, come on, somebody. There are things in your life that will cause you to respond in those ways. Some people will not let go of control uh -huh. 
because they've been in a situation before when they were out of control. And the disaster that happened to them says, I can never let that happen to me again. So we even hold back on God. God, I'm, I love you. I, I'm with you. I trust you as long as I can see where we're going. That means that God cannot take you, amen, into the expansive space of faith in what he can do for you. Because you'll only trust him in what you can see of him. And therefore, he can't take you into the things that are unseen. Into the promises and the blessings that only come from stepping out into zones that you cannot understand. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying to you today? Amen, amen. I want you to understand that Jesus, when he was in the earth, he healed beyond simply surface problems. A lot of what we do today, even in the church, a lot of what they do in medicine is about healing the surface problem. They, we heal the symptoms. We don't heal the root. Amen. Oh, you got, you're sneezing? Here, let me give you something for that. You're coughing? Let me give you some cough syrup. Amen. You got a pain? Let me give you something, amen, to take care of your pains. But why do I have pain? What's causing this pain? Why does this pain keep showing up? We tend to deal with the surface level of things without going deeper. Many times in church, we come and we, and we, we shed off the surface level issues, the surface level problems. Lord, take this off of me. Deal with this with me. But we don't deal with the root issues that are causing, amen, the separation, that cause the segregation, that cause, amen, the pains that keep recurring back, the situations that we keep cycling through. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We keep cycling through the same situation because we haven't really gotten to the root of what's causing us the problems. Jesus, when he came on the scene, dealt with more than just surface problems. Jesus' ministry was holistic. He dealt not only with the spiritual, you can be saved. He dealt with the emotional. He dealt with the physical problems. He dealt even with the financial problems. Jesus was about complete restoration to the image of what God would have us to be. And so he didn't just deal with one part of your problem and leave the rest of it unresolved. He dealt with everything that was going on in your life that needed to be corrected to get you back to where God would have you to be. In the book of Luke chapter 4, Jesus, amen, opened up the scriptures, amen, as he was in, uh, in Nazareth in the temple. And they gave him the scripture, of the, the, the tablet, the scroll of Isaiah, and he opened it up and he began to read, amen. And, I, and, and in Luke chapter 4 and 18, it talks to us and he tells us, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he talks about these key things that he was ordained to do, to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, to bring deliverance to captives, sight to the blind, liberty to bruised, and the coming season of the Lord in the, verse, the next verse. These six things he talked about, and he said, this is fulfilled before your very eyes. In other words, this is exactly what I am here to do. I want you to notice in those things that it's not just the, the natural things, and it's not just the surface things that he's declaring that he's about. Healing is not just about what happens to you on the outside. It's not just about the physical. It's not just about the mending of broken bones, amen, or, or the healing of your blind eyes. But there are spiritual eyes that need to be healed as well. Amen. There are emotional states that need to be dealt with as well. He talks about deliverance of captives, and he's not just talking about people in jail or people who are held up in some place. He's talking about people who in their spirit have been held captive, have been bound up in a situation where they, have, they need to be delivered. They need to be set free. He's not just talking about the natural aspect of being bruised because he doesn't talk about the healing of the bruise. He talks about setting at liberty those that have been bruised, those who have been hurt, those who have been scorned and now have been bound up because of the bruises in their lives. Sometimes bruises are used in order to try and constrain you into the identity of who you are, are to be. When you beat a slave, the bruises are there to remind them of their capacity. It's there to remind them of their limitations. It's there to remind them that you can go this far and no further. Some of us have been emotionally bruised. We've been talked to in such a way to remind us, no, 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 you're not on the same level, amen, as us. This is how far you are and this is how far you can go. 
There have been people that have constrained you or have limited by what they say, what they feel you can do and what you can achieve. Those are bruises that have tried, that have been attempted to bring you into captivity versus being able to achieve what God has called you to be. I want you to understand, this is why it's important to do those things, these, deal with these things, because it will hold you back from the purpose that God has in store for you. We sang that song that says that, that because of the love of God, I know who I am. People will try and tell you who you are, but God knows who you are. And what God sees in you is greater than what some people will see in you. You cannot be limited by the bruises of your life or you'll never achieve what God sees in you. Are you understanding me today? Many people are dressed and clean on the outside, looking good on the inside, smiling every day, walking, amen, amen, standing upright every day, but bruised on the inside suffering inside. How many people do we know, amen, that come in the house of the Lord and wave their hands and give God glory and then leave here and are crying in their midnight hour, amen, amen. suffering by themselves in their homes, amen. being perplexed by the enemy who's telling them every day and every night, you're no good, you're nothing, you might as well give up, you're out of control, you can't do anything. And we come into the house of God looking, amen, saved and holy and anointed. But struggle every night, amen, on our own, amen, with what the devil is trying to do, trying to constrain you into, amen. Y'all need to hear me today. You can survive and still be sick inside. Walking around with cancers, eating us up on the inside, but still going through life, amen, as if everything is okay. Suffering, amen, with ailments, amen, that are eating us from the inside out but still going through life as though everything is fine. You need to understand that there are things inside of us, amen, that we have to deal with. You can be smiling and still be sad, still be in depression, but smiling in people's faces. How are you doing? So good to see you. Glad to be back with you today. But depression eating you up on the inside. Amen. If we don't deal with what goes on on the inside, you're going to miss what God truly has in store for you. You'll miss your potential. It will hold you back. I hear it came to tell you today that we got to deal with some inside issues Amen. Amen. in order to get where God would have us to be. Some of the reasons we can't get deliverance is because we're trying to handle it from the outside without dealing with what's going on on the inside. Some of the reasons I can't truly, amen, get out of this addiction. I can't truly get out of this depression. I can't truly get out of this situation in my life is because I'm trying to fix my outside to look like it's okay. But the reality is down on the inside, there's some things that are rotting away. And if they're not cleaned up and cut out, you will never have the deliverance and never have the victory that you desire to have. Jesus addresses inner healings and the people around them. I just want to show you two examples. One of them is in the one we now call the Apostle Peter. Peter was in a situation after Jesus died where he was torn up inside. His insides were rotting away because of guilt. He had thought that he was going to protect Christ so that this, this attack of the enemies would never be able to overtake him. He said to Christ, I'm ready to die with you. Mm -hmm. That's where his mindset was at. Mm -hmm. But then he ended up out of power. And because he didn't have his own power to deal with the situation. You see, a lot, some of us are, are ready to be faithful as long as we are in control. Peter was like, look, as long as I can swing a sword, I'll swing it till I die. As long as I can do something about this situation, I'm going to do everything I can do. And, I'm, and he was ready and committed and serious to that end. Amen. But when the power was taken away from him, so there was nothing he could do. He was watching, amen, his Lord and Savior heading to a cross, totally out, uh, unable to help the situation. No control. No control. When he lost control, he lost his spirit. He lost his strength and he lost his power. And he began to deny that same Jesus he was ready to die for just a few minutes ago. 
because he had no power in the situation. And he denied him three times. And after he denied him, it cut him to the core. When the cock crew and Jesus looked at him eye to eye and he realized what had happened, the guilt began to eat him up from the inside to the point where he never felt he was worthy to be able to serve his, his, his savior again. Jesus was the one, amen, or, or Peter was the one back when men and women were leaving Jesus because Jesus had pushed them, pressed them, amen, and who he was, and, and they were leaving, and, and Jesus turned to his disciples, and, and he asked them, he said, uh, will you leave too? Peter was the one that responded and said, where else will we go? There is no other life without you. I'm fully committed to you. I'm fully committed to this relationship. This was a man that was fully and completely sold out. But he did not realize the weakness that was inside of him. And when he lost the ability to control what was happening, he lost his character and he denied Christ. After he denied Christ, the guilt and the unworthiness ate him up to the point where this man that had been so bold, this man that was ready to step up, this man that was ready to speak of Jesus Christ anywhere, this man that was ready to die for him, barely could get out of a boat and come see him. He swam, he jumped out, and he came. Amen. After Jesus rose again, he came and he swam to him because he loved him. But then he just filtered back into the crowd. Just one of many. Just hanging out with the brothers. Nothing to say. No strength. No power. No word in his mouth. Nothing to declare. Afraid to say anything. Because inside he had been corrupted. He had been exposed in his own weakness. And his guilt was tearing him apart. There's a scripture in the Old Testament that says we lie down in our shame. And confusion covereth us up. Sometimes when situations happen in our lives, it tears us to the point, amen, where we no longer have strength to move forward. And instead we cover up what's been done. And it resides on the inside. And it changes our character. This character of Peter to jump up, to jump out of the water. I'm getting out the boat. I'm standing up. Lord, I'm ready. I'm with you. All of a sudden, he was hiding in the crowd. Nothing to say. Nothing to declare. Many of us have inner wounds that will hinder us from doing what God has called us to do because they control us from the inside and constrain us like those bruises that keep us captive. Jesus had to go to him and heal him. Because he could have never stood up on the day of Pentecost if he hadn't been healed. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you, Lord. Feed my sheep. Peter, you love me, right? Lord, I do. I love you. I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he still responds them, but he's not dealing. And so he keeps asking him, Peter, you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. Jesus had to re-empower him to let go of the wrongs of his past and be reinstituted to the calling that was in his life. Jesus healed him from the inside out. I want you to understand there are some things in many times in our lives we got to be healed on from the inside out before we're able to go and do what God has called us to do. Peter could have never gone in Acts 2 before the people to declare the message of Christ if he had not been healed by Jesus before Jesus left. Mary Magdalene, one of the women that followed him around throughout his ministry, Mary Magdalene was one of those who had been converted by Christ from a lost state. She's known in the Bible and traditionally has having been a harlot. In the scriptures in Luke 8, it describes her as, as having been filled with, with seven devils that Jesus cast out. She was a throwaway. She was a woman of the street. She was a woman of no value. 
of no respect. She was used and abused. She did what she needed to do to survive. And she got in circles that had caused corruption in her own life and in her own spirit. But she was just surviving life. Sometimes life puts you in a place where you just survive it. There's a whole lot of people out there, maybe a few in here, amen, that just do what they do and do what they got to do to survive life. But surviving is not thriving. And surviving is not achieving the purposes of God in your life. And so here she is going through life and she comes across Jesus. And Jesus comes, amen, to restore her. And not only is it about casting out devils, it's about giving her a whole new outlook on life. It's about reestablishing her identity. Because prior to this, amen, not only had the situation she had gone through, amen, taken away from her, amen, her, 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 her own personal value, but it had been, her identity had been ripped away from her. Whatever she was created by God to be, she had been condensed and concentrated to being nothing but somebody worthy to be abused. Her identity had been redefined by a world that had used her up and cared nothing about her and now identified her as being less than and no good. She lived a life of no respect. She lived a life of no dignity. She wasn't one that could walk down the street and people just nod at her and wave at her. She was one that had to hide in the corridors, hide in the corners. Nobody wanted to be next to her. Amen. Nobody wanted to hang out with her. Nobody wanted to be associated with her. This was the identity that the world had created about her. And this is what she now had accepted and was living as. I want you to understand, many times these things that are put on us, Amen. They're put on us by others, but we accept them and learn to accommodate those in the identity of who we are. Somebody tells you, you're not pretty. You're not one of those. And so you begin to now live like I'm not pretty. You dress like I'm not pretty. You behave like I'm not cute. Nobody wants any attraction from me. It changes your character. Before you know it, I don't care that I'm not pretty. I am who I am. Uh -huh. Take it or leave it. Uh -huh. It's changed your character uh -huh. because of a definition that somebody else has put on you. Amen? Amen? Right we take these things into us yeah. mm -hmm. and we form an identity that then we struggle with and we resist and we battle against all of our lives trying to prove something just because somebody said something. Yeah. Sometimes we go over the top, over the extreme. You say, I'm not pretty. Watch me. I'm going to lose all this weight. I'm going to put all this on. I'm going to get, you're going to see who I am. Y'all know how it is. You come back to those high school reunions looking like, y'all didn't see me back then. Let me tell you about my job. Let me tell you about how much money I make. Let me tell you about who I am. Let me tell you about my kids, my house. Because we have something to prove. Because we're resisting and fighting an identity that somebody has tried to put on us. And it scarred us. On the inside. Are y'all with me today? Mary Magdalene had been living that life. She had adjusted and accommodated herself to a life of nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. People just use me. So I get what I need by letting them use me. And then I move on. I survive with it and I just cancel out these emotions. Because these emotions don't mean anything. I just got to do what I got to do. That's the mindset she was living on when Jesus found her. Cast the devils out of her. Not only did the devils have to come out, but her mindset, her identity of who she was had to change. Because even with the demons out, you still got to understand who you are. You still got to understand that you're more than this. If you don't change your identity, you go back, right back to where you were. And so Jesus may have been the first man to actually show her what it was to love her and to, and to care about her without wanting something from her. It changed her life. This is why she became so connected, so committed to Christ. Because she had never been treated this way before. Probably goes all the way back to her childhood. She had never experienced 
somebody that truly cared about her without just wanting something from her. She had never experienced somebody who wanted to give her something without her having to give something back. She didn't know what it was, amen, to have a kind of a relationship where somebody truly just felt something and loved her and poured into her and wanted the best for her without taking something from her in exchange. She had to reestablish the identity of who she was. Something had to show her that she's better than just being used by these men to get everything she wants. Something had to show her that she had more value than the things that these people were trying to put on her and trying to identify her and characterize her as. Jesus wasn't just about healing her on the outside. Because healing her on the outside was just the beginning. There had to be a change to her lifestyle. After the demonic hole was broken, Jesus helped redefine her character and her identity into that which God had ordained for her to be. I want you to understand that in order to truly experience restoration, it's got to reach deep into the inside of you. It can't just wash you on the outside. You can't just come up and have a prayer spoken and Oh, I feel good, and and all of a sudden, you're moving on. Because if it hasn't penetrated to the inside, you're going right back to where you came from. You might look clean for the minute. You might feel refreshed for the moment. You might feel like you've been changed, amen, for the time. But unless it seeps to the inside, the inner pores, the inner tissues, you're going back. Somebody say you're going by. Going Many of us are still dealing with inner scars and inner pain. Mm-hmm. Deep tissue injuries. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Many of us are still hurt by things from our past. Mm-hmm. People told us what people said about us. Mm-hmm. How people treated us. Where they left you at. Mm-hmm. What they kept you out of. Mm-hmm. What box they put you in. Many of us are still carrying that burden. We may have adapted to it, but it hasn't been healed. You know about certain cysts that people get, Mm -hmm. and they may not be malignant. They may be benign, Mm -hmm. but they're still there. Your body will take some dangerous things inside of it, and if it can't cast it out, it'll just build an encasing around it Uh to keep it, try and keep it under control. Many of us have things in our lives we've just encased and we think we have them under control. But every now and then they slip out. Every now and then they show up. That limp that you got from that situation, you just learn how to walk with that limp. And now it's part of your character. You're still going on, but you still got that limp. You allow these things to become part of who you are. Sometimes we don't even realize the burdens that we're still carrying mm-hmm. because it's been so long or we think we've let it go and we don't realize how much it truly is impacting us mm-hmm. and impacting our life, our decision, our choices, our directions, hindered because of things of the past that truly have not been resolved. Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you as we approach this final week of consecration, here it is. That in order to get to your next level, you must be delivered. Amen. You have to overcome those things that are scarring you, that are holding you, that are impacting you, that have a hold on you. And you may have gotten comfortable in tolerating that life. You know, Mary Magdalene got to a point where she learned how to tolerate That life, that lifestyle. You can learn to tolerate just about anything if you do it long enough. But that doesn't mean that it's it's going to enable you to reach your potential. In fact, it's going to hinder it. Peter kept, kept walking that walk like he was fine and okay. But he wouldn't have engaged the same way. Let somebody else do it. Let somebody else stand up. I, I'm here. I'm okay. I still loved you, Jesus. But, but I think somebody else needs to do this. 
I think somebody else needs to step into that position. The character that was in him that was called, that he was called for, to be bold and to step out. It wouldn't have been there if he hadn't been healed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well. You only strip off what you're aware of. Amen. And once you're aware of it, then you have to decide to let it go. So in this time, in this final week, there are some things, and I go back to what I said several weeks ago, there's a stripping off process. Problem is, oftentimes, we're more ready to strip off what's on the outside. But now I'm here to tell you there's some things on the inside that you may need to strip off to. Amen. Some things you've been holding on to. Some of you are uncomfortable just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. You almost see you kind of <laughs> getting tense. Because when you approach it, it's challenging, it's difficult. It's become a part of you. You've adjusted to it. But you don't want to stay Mary Magdalene. Amen. You don't want to stay in a life, in a lifestyle that was never ordained for you. You may have done it a long time, but it doesn't mean that's where you need to stay. And if you truly want to go where God has for you next, you have to be willing to allow him to take from you what the devil put on you, clean you up, and take you to your next step. Hallelujah. 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 It's time today for an inner healing. It's time to deal with some deep tissue issues, deep tissue injuries. Amen? How many of you believe that today?